Hi, I'm Jack Barazzini, and you're listening to The Secret to Stargate, where we talk about the hidden meanings and deeper layers found in the Stargate movies, TV series, and more. And joining me today are Lisa Jones. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Jack. And Victor Lamb. Hey, Victor. Hi, Jack. Father Corey cannot join us today. I heard something about him turning into a giant glowing butterfly and flying away, but those are just rumors. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, today we are discussing the 21st episode of Season 5, Meridian. While on a mission to the planet Lingara, Dr. Daniel Jackson is exposed to lethal levels of radiation. He's rushed back to Earth and taken to the infirmary, where it is determined that he has only a few hours left to live. While he's in the infirmary, he is visited by Oma de Sala, an ascended being who offers him the chance to ascend to a higher plane of existence. Daniel is initially hesitant, but he eventually agrees. His friends and colleagues are saddened by his decision, but they eventually come to accept it. They gather around Daniel's bed as he ascends, and they watch he is, as he is taken up to the higher plane of existence. We also get the story of what exactly happened on Limbada, Lem, Lengrana, say that Kalana. five times fast. <laughs> and we are introduced to the character of Jonas Quinn. We also get to see um, the accident that actually happened, and Daniel's name is cleared because he was blamed for uh, causing the accident initially <laughs> what are your thoughts on this episode victor yeah so i like this episode overall i really like the character of jonas quinn um i like corin nemick the the actor uh quite a bit um from his parker lewis uh, can't lose show so i do have a confession to make as the show was originally airing i actually started with season six which is i think when it jumped to sci-fi so i caught you know, one through five on DVDs and, and reruns and stuff. So when I went back and saw this episode, I think by the time I saw this episode, Daniel Jackson had rejoined the show or something. So his uh, transition didn't have quite the impact uh, on me as it would have had to fans at the time. Um, but I, I, I like this episode overall. I think it works. You know, it's, it's a momentous episode. One of the main characters leaving the show, but it also kind of works as a, as a planet of the week episode too, I really like when we get these kind of, you know, planets that are at the stage, you know, 1940s stage of technology. We see a couple of them in Atlantis too. And, and I just, I think it's really cool. Yeah. I like that we get a few outside shots of the planet and it looks basically just like earth in the 1940s. And I always like when, when they do that kind of thing with sci-fi where it basically just looks like earth. It's always interesting yeah. and weird. What about you, Lisa? <laughs> Uh, this episode uh, being the, the final on screen of Daniel Jackson, at least for now, um, it, it had a lot of, to promise and a lot, you know, for the, for the fans. Um, and I think it delivered. I think that the other cast members really um, stepped up. They, they all just executed flawlessly the emotion, the, you know, the drama of what you see, what they were feeling and then you're feeling it and you don't know, is he, dead, dead? Is he coming back? Is it, you know, they kind of leave it up in the air, which, um, at the time, I mean, ascended, we didn't really, you know, was that permanent? Was it not? Yeah. Um, now again, like you, Victor, I knew this was going to happen because this episode aired in May of 2002. And the news broke that Daniel Jackson had left, I mean, Daniel Jackson, <laughs> that Michael <laughs> Shanks had left the show. It broke by December 01. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So we knew it was, I mean, we knew it was coming if you um, were fans online or any of that kind of stuff. So it, so it didn't have that emotional punch really because we knew he was going. But I still think it was brave. Not many shows um, are willing to kill off a main cast member and then do it in such a way that he could come back because they left the door open for him. So it was kind of, I don't say fun, but I really enjoyed watching it again. Um, they, like I said, I just felt like they gave really gr good performances as a send off. Mm -hmm. And I know we were talking before the show, uh, but you did some, you did some digging on the reasons why, uh, Michael Shanks wanted to leave the show. Yeah. So he evidently it was contract negotiation and he didn't get what he wanted. He, um, said in some interviews that are still online, that he was upset with the direction of the character. He felt like he wasn't being utilized. He wanted Daniel Jackson to be deeper, you know, further developed, really. Um, he's a great actor, and just to show off more of his, you know, acting chops, um, didn't feel like Daniel 
you know, had enough to do, which we've actually <laughs> mentioned quite a few times yeah. this season, mm-hmm. I think, about how many times Daniel was kind of by the wayside. So, um, yeah, he didn't leave to go do anything else, he said. He didn't have anything else lined up, but it was, he just felt like it was the right time to, to go. Um, I guess mm-hmm. when they wouldn't agree to his terms. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if, I wonder if going into the show, he had the idea that it was going to be mainly about him or uh, Daniel Jackson and Jack O'Neill because they were the two carryovers from the movie. Mm-hmm. And it's really much more of an ensemble show. It's it's definitely weighted towards uh, Jack O'Neill. And I think that's mainly because of Richard Dean Anderson's clout. But mm-hmm. it's really evened out over the seasons. And each character has gotten uh, a lot to do. But like we talked about Daniel Jackson did seem a bit sidelined this season. And I wonder, I wonder where in the process it had been determined that he wasn't coming back. And if that had an effect on Mm. his utilization in season five at all. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. And he, he did say in one of the interviews that I read that um, he really thought with the movie and then the pilot that he was signing on to do a show that was Daniel and Jack you know, kind of Mm. the main stars and then the others to be supporting characters. And so he wasn't happy with um, the show became more military, more NID, that kind of stuff. And that as an archaeologist or consultant, there's not as much for his character to do. Mm -hmm. So. And the irony is that we get a really good Jack and Daniel episode here. Yeah. (laughs) Where they get, you know, Jack is passionately fighting for, for his, for his friend um, you know, all the team members get to say some pretty good, uh, goodbyes there. You know, Jack's first goodbye is, is pretty subdued. Sam's, I mean, is really emotional. I mean, Amanda mm-hmm. Tapping, just my notes were like, you know, what a phenomenal actress she is and how much she sold that scene. And even Tilk's goodbye, you know, was, was very, you know, heartfelt as well, as well. But then at the end, um, after, uh, well, we can get to it, but, um, in the, in the plot, you know, there's, there's the moment where Daniel has to convince Jack to let him go and, uh, just, you know, the way it's played. And then Jack has to convince the team to let Daniel go. Um, it was, it just really spoke to their, to their friendship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was really nice to see that. Um, especially with Jack because he has such that, such a rough exterior. He doesn't really like to show his emotions and you can tell how much he struggled with that, but it really worked and it really ended up being like very touching. Mm -hmm. Well, and and you've seen, I think the last couple of seasons, especially we've seen them fight a lot, disagree a lot and argue. And, you know, if you go back to the first couple of seasons, you really had their friendship was such a core of at least the first, I'd say two seasons. And so you really felt that this episode, you could Mm -hmm. see it, that, that they um, had that connection because you forget, I mean, yeah, they were in the movie, like they were the original, <laughs> you know, yeah. characters that went to Abydos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Daniel does kind of get to reflect back over his life and his career. And there's the theme of, you know, was, was everything I did pointless? You know, did it, did it even amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world? <laughs> um, so, and so we, you know, see him with this sh- picture of Charest and, you know, uh, the people he couldn't save. Is the fight against the Gould really making a difference, for, you know, for anyone? So it's some pretty good themes there too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's nice that they brought back the stuff with the Ascended. Um, was that season three or season four where we had that episode where they go to the planet and we initially meet them? Cab, I think, I that, think was that was three. I think it was three, yeah. But it was nice to uh, nice for them to bring that back in, and I wonder if that's something that was planned to be brought back or if that was a one-off that they were able to incorporate into this, because that's where that uh, started with, with his character and they didn't really do much with it then, Mm -hmm. but it's nice to see them tie back into that. Yeah. They, they do Mm -hmm. reference the uh, incident on, on Keb. I'm looking back to see when that might've been, but uh, yeah, but anyways. um, Yeah. And so what sets this up is that on Kelowna, they're doing experiments on a highly potent uh, derivative of, of uh, Naquita called Naquadria, which is, you know, 10, 100 X more powerful than Naquita. And in the hands of these people who are technologically, you know, 1940s Earth, there's a Cold War that's, that's a brewing on their planet. And so they're 
they're uh, itching to get their hands on an atomic bomb. And it won't be the last time we see a, a civilization <laughs> at Stargate trying to get an atomic bomb. And they do kind of obliquely mention, you know, the other side. Um, you know, like we've tried to, you know, help people in the past before and they turned out to be Nazis. Colonians, thankfully, <laughs> are not Nazis. They're they're just, you know, basically U.S. in 1940 trying to develop an atomic bomb. Yeah. And there's an accident, um, an atomic accident. Mm-hmm. And I want to put in a plug for a book that Jimmy Aiken uh, mentions quite a bit on Mysterious World called Atom- uh, Atomic Accidents by James Mahaffey, um, M-A-H-A-F-F-E-Y. We can put it in the show notes. But it's a very good book, and it basically details every single accident that's you know occurred since the history of us experimenting with you know us being hum- humanity atomic uh, energy, and and so if if you've read the book, then you could say you kind of understand what's happening that Daniel is a dead man walking from basically the second he was exposed to the radiation mm-hmm. as his you know body starts to melt, which I thought they did that very effectively, making him look as gruesome as possible. He basically turns into dark man. Sam yeah. Raimi's Darkman with the bandages and the the sores and the oozing. It's a very oozy episode. <laughs> it is. And they did a good job with the accuracy of how these atomic accidents happen. Like usually when people think of like an atomic accident or you see it in a TV show, it's very lots of explosions, lots of like glowing energy and stuff. Mm-hmm. But in reality, you don't see anything. And um it made me think of this thing that I, I read about called, I don't know if you've heard of it. It probably is mentioned in that book, but the demon core, it was this particular core of uranium that they had that I think ended up killing like three or four people over the course of its use. And they eventually disposed of it, but it was like two spheres of uranium and it was fine as long as it was held apart. But once they connected together, it would go super critical and that's what caused the accident. Um, and so when he goes into the chamber and all he has to do is yeah. pull that piece out and move it away, like a few feet away and it ends the criticality event. That's pretty accurate to how these kind of things go. So I like that they, they did it that way. Yeah. Yeah, I did. That, that part was handled very well. So, you know, he gets to die or send, you know, being heroic, which is, which is great. Um, mm-hmm. as well as, you know, the effect he has on Jonas Quinn too. Mm-hmm. Jonas Quinn, we, sh- we should say he does, you know, join SG-1 next season, but in this, he's a kind of a child prodigy, you know, has, has many degrees, very quick study, um, is basically the, the ethicist working on the, the nuclear um, project, but also, you know, has been a, doing some research on the Stargate, you know, kind of very good at seeing all sides of, of, the, uh, of the discussion. You know, he, he understands just how much his government needs this weapon, but at the same time is open to what Daniel Jackson is saying about, you know, this could potentially destroy your planet. Um, it destroyed the Gould who were here 10,000 years ago, these experiments. Um, so he eventually comes around and, you know, steals all the Nequadria from his government and zips through the, uh, the wormhole, um, and delivers it to earth basically because he doesn't want his planet to blow itself up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also wants to honor kind of Daniel Jackson's legacy. And that's the impact that, Jackson has on him. Yeah. And that's, so what ha- what happened was uh, when the accident happened, the government tried to cover it up and they blamed it on Daniel Jackson because he was the one telling them, this is what's going to happen <laughs> if you start experimenting with, experimenting with this and you don't know what you're doing. And so they blamed it on him and it kind of gets into a diplomatic situation where they will initially want to extradite him back to the planet for, um, like for trial and to pin it all on him and to keep the experiments going. And Jack ends up going to the planet to deliver a letter from Hammond to the government. But he just tells Jonas straight up, like, that's not going to happen. I'm going to fight for him. And you know what happened. And I think that was also very instrumental in having Jonas turn and end up siding with SG-1. Mm-hmm. It's... <laughs> I love the character of Jonas Quinn, so I'm gonna throw that out there right yeah. now. But I do really, really like Jonas Quinn. Um, and, but it's 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 so unfortunate that he is introduced in this episode that we to replace Daniel. That's mm-hmm. what I mean. Yeah. I think it's pretty obvious that's what they're doing. Um, but they they set it up that he's partially the reason Daniel died. You know, and you're you're having. They set him up to not ever be accepted by the fans. 
Let's just throw it out there, right? Because it's his government covered it up. He didn't step up right away. Yes, he did do the right thing. And then he had to leave his home world because he stole the Nequadria. Um, but fans, are then they don't accept him because, you know, the beloved Daniel Jackson was just, I'm going to say killed off even though he's not dead. You know, mm-hmm. he was ascended. So I don't know. I just, I love, I love Corin. I love the actor. I love the character. Um, so this was, this is a hard episode for me because, yeah. <laughs> you know, I know it's coming and he, he just does a stellar job in the limited time he gets to stay with, with SG one. Yeah. The show's writers really didn't do him any favors the way he was introduced. And I think partially because of the goodwill I have towards the actor from, you know, Parker Lewis can't lose. And then the season six being the one where I kind of picked up the show when it, when it jumped to sci-fi, I think that's, you know, it's kind of like the, your doctor who is the one that, you know, you started (laughs) watching (laughs) Or yeah. like when you were at the age to watch Doctor Who, it's someone who was on, and that's your doctor, right? So mm-hmm. he was kind of like my archaeologist uh, on SG-1. But no, I'd like to see, I mean, if they're going to bring any character back, you know, in a new show, mm-hmm. I'd like to see them bring bring Jonas Quinn back. I think that would be that would be a lot of fun. That would be fun. So is he only in season six? He has we, one episode in season seven, I think. Yeah. Uh, and he he comes yeah. back and, it, and it's a, it's fabulous. Yeah. It's a really good episode. It's a yeah. really good episode. It, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Daniel is not gone for long. Yeah. And he doesn't end up being like a recurring character or moving over mm-hmm. to Atlantis or anything. He's just gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah he is. Unfortunately. They, they, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, they don't, spoilers, they don't kill him off or anything. So no. I'm very great, grateful for that, but that's yeah. good. Yeah. No. So it's no. And so it's, it's, I like season six a lot. I think it stands up against any season of Stargate personally in, in, in my book. Mm-hmm. But um, I do too. I was looking through the list, you know, as we were yeah. prepping and I was like, oh, yeah, there's really good episodes in season six. So yeah, he, uh, yeah, he, 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 you know, he, he fills, I hate to say fills that hole, but I thought he did so really well. I just, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's just, is, is back. Because- we could talk more about it, but he just brings like this charm and charisma yeah. to the show where he's just in like wide eyed wonder at like everything from like ice cream to, you know, it's just like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I wrote that in yeah. my notes about this episode. I was yeah. like so much smiling. Yeah. Right. He's just, like you said, he's just Giddy. smiling and yeah. happy and like <laughs> all the experiences. And so it's, he's an alien, but he looks like a human. Um, so he gets a little different, treated a little differently than Teal'c in that way. Yeah. And, and Teal'c is so stoic, you know? So Jonas gets to be the, kind of like the kid. It's like the opposite of Teal'c, really. He's yeah. very, very yeah. excited and emotive, whereas Teal'c is a wall. But they, it doesn't <laughs> go as far in the other direction as they did with Avala, who I felt could be, you know, as much as a fan of Claudia Black as I am, I felt <laughs> Vala, the character, could be a little much. Yeah, yeah, a little much. There's a little extra or whatever they call, whatever they said. <laughs> so we had a couple I, more seasons for that one. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I try not to like read ahead, um, yeah. like on the wiki or anything. Like I, I know a lot of stuff just from looking around, and it's a yeah. 20 plus year old show. Um, and I on Twitter recently, I've been getting a lot of posts about Stargate, and there's someone is like sharing a bunch of gifts of. Daniel Jackson and Vala, and I don't really know anything about her character, but it just seems like she's constantly hitting on Daniel. Yes. Kind of constantly hitting on everyone. Everybody. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) That's much later, like 9, 10, but yeah. So, (laughs) so (laughs) with Michael Shanks leaving, so one of the things, so we already mentioned he's going to be back. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think that's a huge secret. So he's only gone for season six, and even then he's into at least two episodes of season season six. So what happened, though, is that some fans started a website called SaveDanielJackson.com, and it is still there. Oh, that's sweet. (laughs) It is still there. And they um, fans donated money to put ads, and they put ads in industry magazines, so like Variety, they tried for TV Guide, they sci-fi magazines like there were ads everywhere to save daniel jackson and um basically the fans went crazy 
And they did a back, this is snail mail time, right? So letter writing campaign to MGM, every, you know, everyone involved. And the addresses are still on savedanieljackson.com. So much papyrus <laughs> font. Oh my gosh, yes. It's so 2003, it's, right? So. <laughs> oh, no, end of 2001. Oh, it 2001, was put up in right, December of 2001. Okay, yeah. yeah. It, it, so it's a little crazy. I read that they raised over $12,000 oh to goodness, pay for ads. Goodness. In 2002, which is, you know, was, yeah, a good deal of money. Yeah, before the inflation the government has caused or whatever. Yeah. Makes, so. <laughs> and um, they said that the producers, MGM, everybody, they were really, really shocked at the outpouring from the fans. And then they they made a deal. So he comes <laughs> back. And, he, and I will say his role is better. He has some really yeah. good episodes and he was nominated um, for an award, a sci-fi award for acting. And yeah, I mean, he, he gets to do a little bit more when he comes back. Yeah. Like the season seven, episode two titled Daniel Jackson is awesome and saves the world. And we, we, sh- <laughs> <laughs> he's, he saves the day and is the main character of this show. That was the title. I don't know. <laughs> no, it wasn't one of the episodes. No, nice. but, but there are some episodes like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I knew this. I knew he was going to leave the show soon. I didn't know when. I actually didn't realize it was this episode. Mm. Um, and I just recently bought uh, season six and season seven on DVD. And I had looked at them both, but I didn't realize it wasn't Daniel Jackson on the season <laughs> oh, six when I hadn't looked at it closely. So after this episode, I went and looked at it. I was like, oh, that's not Michael Shanks. I just honestly hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you take it? You knew he was leaving, but you didn't know it was this episode. So. What was it like for you watching it and not knowing this was coming right now? I I mean, I, f- I feel like the most um, emotional part was honestly Teal'c's goodbye because Teal'c was so reserved and quiet. Uh, so so that got me a bit teary. Um, and I, I just liked the, the connections that he had with the team. Mm. Um, but I think also knowing that he's going to be back kind of really, it undercuts any sort of like real emotional feeling about it because i knew he was going to be back so i knew he wasn't dead um but i think they did a good job with it mm-hmm. yeah there, i mean and then there are some things about this episode that are not so great <laughs> like the the airsats and koans of oma de sala you know and and the whole like ontology of you know the ascended beings. I think they do a much better job at the time to get to Atlantis of explaining how ascension works and, you know, how the ancients achieved it. And it wasn't just through realizing the meal was cooked a long time ago or something. Um, you know, so, I, but if, if, and, and it, it feels a little new agey and I guess, you know, it's, it's kind of probably the best version of this that we were going to get, you know, like, you know, you have to judge yourself by your intentions, Daniel, not by your actions. And the only thing you can decide is if you're good or evil, you know, and then you will be free of your burdens and be able to fly with me through the Stargate and explore the stars. And we are stars, Daniel. We are made of stars. You know, it just seemed a little like (laughs) goofy, but I mean, granted that they couldn't, you know, they can't tie themselves to, you know, Christianity or any other religion. I suppose it was the, probably the best version we were going to get, but it was a little a little like new agey. It was very uh, like full of what is it? Full of sound, but signifying nothing. Just a lot of a lot yeah. of like <laughs> fluff. But I guess I guess the way I take that is um, the Arthur C. Clarke quote about any sufficiently advanced technology would appear to be magic to us. So I'm going to assume that there's actually some sort of technological explanation behind this, and because humans are so far below the ascended that's just how it comes across because it can't really comprehend what's going on yet. Yeah. That's my head cannon. But just this being S- SQPN, we we should say that, that when you die, you're not the one who judges your soul, your soul. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Yeah. yeah no. And uh, there's lots of, there's lots of kind of like, they didn't go full like, but Frazier gets a little murdery at one point, you know, she's like, look at him suffering there. Sometimes I think the best thing to do would just be to smother him with this pillow. <laughs> She doesn't say that, but she's, she kind of hints at it and, and yeah. you're like, where are you going with this Frasier? And then, and then Sam runs out of the room and you're like, and she's in the locker. You're like, oh my gosh, is she going to get a gun? But it turns out she's getting the gold healing device, oh, but yeah. that doesn't, she doesn't know how to use it. So it doesn't work very well. 
Yeah. And we forgot that that was on the base. We've talked about that. Like, where yeah. is it? Why don't we use it? And it was there. And, it was um, in a and I, I, when, when, um, Sam does it and he starts screaming out in pain and you just, you just see Carter just crumple. Like, yeah. I yeah. didn't mean to hurt you. So that was, I just, like I said, all the acting with the, the team was fabulous. And when Carter is, is talking to him and I think he's unconscious when she is, or when she's talking to him, she says something about, uh, you don't tell people like who you're close to how you feel until it's too late. And Mm -hmm. I know that she didn't really have, she doesn't have a romantic connection with Daniel, but that's almost how it felt the way Mm -hmm. she said that. Or does she? I was thinking about you, Victor, <laughs> with your shipping of, yeah. of Daniel yeah. and Sam. I actually thought that during that scene. I was like, oh, I, oh, yeah, I could totally see that right now. Yeah. And, and, and I think there's another moment when he's like, like floating away or something, you know, where he like, I don't know. He, and, I don't know. I can't remember now. But so, and then Jacob shows up jacob selmak shows up and at first i was like oh now why like why are they bringing him in and it was because he could he could maybe cure daniel and mm-hmm. he uses the hand device and it's kind of working but it won't restore him to full health maybe but i think it's it's you know dramatically necessary because then it gives daniel you know the cho- you know he has to make a choice between you know they're trying to save me i could go back to to fighting the gould or i could um tell them to stop and I guess, you know, a ghoul, an alien hand device would count as like extraordinary life-saving means or something, but maybe not if you're a member of Stargate, you know, and, and would it be ethical not to use it if, if you knew how to use it to save somebody's life? You're saying your DNR needs to be more specific? Yeah, it needs to exclude or include alien devices. And I think <laughs> it being SG-1, they pretty much have to include like any... You know, they even mentioned we could get a sarcophagus, but it's too heavily guarded. And that's mm-hmm. way worse than a healing device. Yeah, but Jack pointed out yeah. he's been in it a bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah, he has. Like, what's <laughs> one more time? He'll get, you know, we'll just, yeah. Let him have that that uh, yeah. sarcophagus relapse and get him back on the wagon. He'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did really like Mel Harris as Oma de Sala. Yeah, in yeah, the she's past the we've just Oma. had the face with the glowing. So to yeah. actually have an actress and a and a great actress at that to uh embody Oma and we and she will play Oma from now until we're done. And um so I really I really like her. I thought I know her stuff was fluff, her words. Yeah. But uh I like that she didn't she wasn't like the monk guy in maternal instinct and she didn't speak just in those I forgot mm. what you called them. The oh, riddles. Yeah, those end coins, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she did it a few times, and then she kind of, like, yeah. stopped. <laughs> and I like Daniel's interaction. He's like, yeah, I'm on board. He's glow me. You know, yeah. I think that was <laughs> G with a G. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good, yeah. Yeah, that was a nice way to handle it, rather than him just talking to a glowing, yeah, smiley mm-hmm. woman. And, you know? and, and there are a lot of funny moments, too, like when they're standing around, like, watching, you know, Jacob's trying to heal Daniel, but it's not looking like it's going to work. And then all of a sudden, um, Daniel brings Jack into his like, you know, vision that he's having of the Stargate and Jack looks around and is like, Daniel, did, did you want something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it very quickly picks up on what's happening. And, um, and I like how even when Jack kind of comes back to the room and says, you know, Jacob, like, give it a rest. And Jacob doesn't stop. He's like, does, does anyone else want to tell me what to do here? And nobody, <laughs> like, you'd expect Hammond to, like, jump in or, or Frazier or something. But mm-hmm. they all kind of defer to, to Jack. Uh, and I think that that's a recognition of their, their friendship, too. Mm-hmm. That, um, you know, he was, what's that called with the, with the living will, with the person, power of attorney or power of durable Jackness or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, and yeah. he gets to make the decisions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I thought it, that was kind of cool. Yeah, because it doesn't really seem like it's working, and it seems like it's a very thin chance. And even if it does work, he may not live long after that. So I think yeah. that that's how they all took it. But then we get big glowy butterfly Daniel. Yeah, I'm gl- I'm glad we didn't see like Daniel's face superimposed on like the yeah. space squid or something. I mean, I think that you know, there's a thing where where Daniel walks through the gate or something, or walks towards the gate, mm-hmm. and then we see Jack's face. I think the episode should have ended there, but instead we cut back to like you know another glowy jellyfish, and for a brief second, I was like, it should have just ended before we saw that. So, 
We don't need to. I thought it ended it so Daniel walks through the Stargate, which I'm glad they actually yeah. showed him physically doing that because having mm-hmm. the character exit as a CGI glowy yeah. squid would not be good emotionally. <laughs> and then you see you see Jack looking at him, and then I think it cuts there, and I think that oh that was yeah, better it than cuts back the glowy. to it cuts back to sick bay, and there's like a flash of light, I think, or something. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, I was like, whatever. So yeah, it was it was a uh, it's good. There's there's lots lots going on there, you know. I think we see with the Ascension less of the new aginess, um, uh, you know, and, and, and for some reason, like I always associate Oma DeSala with that one episode where they're like in a diner for Mm -hmm. like hours, it seems like. And so I was glad that that wasn't this episode. So, yeah. And so we do see her, see her character more. A little bit. At least a couple more times. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because Oma's, yeah, her whole thing is helping, like, human mortals ascend, you know, Mm -hmm. and and she's kind of like, I don't know if they explicitly state she's kind of on the outs with the other ascended beings for for doing that. Like, in that one with the space weapon, and and we saw, like, the boring guy, what was his name? Orlin. Orlin, yeah. Yeah. Like, he was kind of, and then, I think they may have mentioned it in that episode. They did. They asked him if he knew her, and he was like, no. Yeah, I don't know if we know yet that, that she's, like, a rebel. She's a rebel ascended. Yeah. Um, but we, we learn more about it with Daniel being one and getting to come talk to people. Wouldn't it have been great if Orlin was the one who was there talking to Daniel? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm watching you sleep. I'm oh, no. You. I'm watching you die, Daniel. <laughs> no. I'm going to go buy a bunch of stuff with your uh, credit card <laughs> now. <laughs> How's Sam? Does she talk about me? <laughs> Does she talk about me? <laughs> I, I watched her tearful goodbye to you. Oh gosh. <laughs> maybe maybe if Daniel had met Orlin, he would yeah. have second thoughts about becoming an ascended. Be like, I don't want to hang out with that guy. <laughs> yeah. I did think I liked it that Jack says, What does this mean? And Daniel's like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a better option than dying, like, probably. Like <laughs> And that's yeah. what, that that was a like a dialogue insert from the writers themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Was, yeah. No Leaving promises. It open so he can saying. come back. Yeah. 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 Where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> can you come yeah. back? <laughs> yeah. SaveDanielJackson.com. Depends yeah. on that. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's where he went. He went to an internet cafe in the sky and opened that website. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, did y'all have any other thoughts on this episode? Uh, SaveJonasQuinn.com. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag bring back Jonas Quinn. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. You so go. I'm very excited, um, you know, for the next, uh, you know, 20 or so episodes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Don't, don't, it, it, for people who love Daniel Jackson, this was a hard episode. And, and I think y'all know he's not, he was not my favorite character. I, I was still sad, but um, don't get discouraged because there's still lots of really, really good Stargate coming. At nice. least for another yep. couple of seasons before it doesn't. <laughs> but then we have Atlantis. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah we're Atlantis actually buzz. really close to Atlantis. Yeah, we are just a couple seasons, so yeah. it's coming up. Nice. It's coming up pretty quick. Awesome. Yeah, I, I liked it. I kind of sad to see Daniel go, but I think it will be nice to have some uh fresh blood in the team change things up. Yeah. So that that's the next step is to see how they see how they do or do not accept uh Jonas. Yeah. Yeah, and they really ramp up the uh the the ghouled threats. Mm-hmm. Nice. Starting with next episode. So Yeah, we get a lot of a lot of I don't want to say it's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun yeah. ghouled, a lot of other stuff that's coming. So it's it's awesome. I know we say that at the end of every season, don't we? Yeah. That we're like, okay, the next season's really, really good. <laughs> I think they've all been good. So yeah. I, I agree with that statement. <laughs> Awesome. Before we go, we'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of Stargate, including Lawrence Z, Maria N, Patricia R, Ron S, and Ryan W. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of Stargate and all the shows at StarQuest. And you can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give, and be sure to follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or on the SQPN YouTube channel. And to find previous episodes of Secrets of Stargate and to see feedback, yeah, I want to hear from uh, the audience. Uh, 
how did you feel about this episode? How do you feel yeah. about Daniel leaving? And what are your what are your thoughts on Daniel versus uh, Jonas in the in the <laughs> fan rankings? So there please let us know. You can do that at uh, Stargate at sqpn.com. And you can follow StarQuest on social media at facebook.com slash StarQuest Media or on Twitter at SQPN. You can also check out our Discord at uh, sqpn.com slash Discord. We have a Stargate channel there, so we can start that uh, start that argument right there. <laughs> we'll be back next time and we'll be discussing the next episode of SG-1, the finale of Season 5, Revelations. Until then, Lisa Jones, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of Stargate. Thanks, Jack. And Victor Lambs, thank you too. Thanks, Jack. Do your thing, glow me. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, I'm Jack Berzini. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Stargate on StarQuest. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think? <laughs>